Hi there. I'm Teresa Marone, and I'm the Learn To Queen. Join me and my guest expert collaboration partners for an inside look at the problem-solving industry. We want to help you so that you can help others. Hi there, and welcome to Learn To. I am so happy to welcome you all to our show this evening. I'm Teresa Marone. I'll be your host. And I wanted to tell you all that Learn To is for self-help and personal development professionals that seek to inspire, transform, and motivate using compassionate and conscious marketing techniques. We're so happy to welcome you to our show. Now, at Learn To, we teach you to create original content, instructional content, and market it under your own brand. I'm the Learn To Queen, and that's because I want to bring you success at affordable prices virtually in various platforms that we sponsor from time to time. Now, um, join us at LearnTo.us to find out more about that, those opportunities, my collaboration partners, specials, and all kinds of fun things. But let's get to our show today. First of all, um, tell your story and find your tribe. Now, that kind of sounds intriguing to me, but it also kind of sounds like a lot of things that I hear from other people uh, all across the World Wide Web in person. Tell your story, find your tribe. I mean, what does that really mean? I really think that being able to tell your own story in a way that brings people to action is a special gift and it's something that people in the self-help and personal development field need to develop in order to be a success. Now, you know it's important to put your fabulousness on every day. You know, sometimes you don't even feel that fabulous yourself. Sometimes your confidence is down or you don't feel well because you're worried about a loved one or you're personally uh, a little bit lower energy than you would normally be. But you need to put that fabulousness on and wear it like your success and happiness depends on it because it does. And that doesn't really mean that you need to act like you're never wrong. Now, one of the paradigms that, um, you know, I notice over and over, and I know that I've been a victim of this mindset myself, is that if you want people to pay you to solve their problems, then you kind of want to rise above it and act like you never had that problem. But that's really not how it works. Because if if you can take the mistakes, the problems, the challenges, and the struggles that you have had in the past, learn from them, and move on, then sharing those hard-won solutions and that knowledge with others is the very foundation of your business. It's the foundation of all of our businesses. It's the foundation of the self-help and personal development field. So the best way to share that knowledge with others is to put it in uh, the form of a story by putting them in the picture with you. In other words, if they can say, wow, she's felt the way that I felt or he's felt the way that I felt and look at them now. Look at how they are interacting. Look at their success story now. Then you are much more likely to have the trust of the people who have that problem currently. They want to solve their problem, right? They're not going to trust that you can solve their problem if you can't relate to it on a very personal basis. Now, I wanted to take this opportunity right now to let you know that I'm going to share with you a few ways that you can tell your story that brings people to action. But I am going to be welcoming a special guest to our show in a few minutes, and I wanted to tell you just a little bit about her before I get to my content. My special guest today is Martha A. Sanchez, and she's a marketing strategist for podcasting by professionals. Now, she's going to be discussing one of the solutions of telling your story in one of the most positive ways and also one of the most popular ways, uh, which is podcasting. Now, this is an excellent way to share your story. And she's going to be also sharing with us five mistakes you do not want to make 
and how she knows about them. And we'll go all through that. And I want her to say hello to you before we get back to my content. So, Martha, say hello to our listeners. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Martha, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the show today. Oh, Thank you so much, Teresa. It is my pleasure. I'm going to really enjoy sharing some of these things with your audience. Well, excellent. Well, um, I think my point with my content today is to just kind of set up how important it is to share your story in the right way because everyone has heard someone go into their story and it just, I mean, there's a couple of downfalls here and one of them is oversharing, all right? If someone comes to you about their problem, you don't want to spend all of their time talking about, you know, your past and how wonderful, you know, your solutions and, and kind of set yourself up and above it. That would be a mistake. Another mistake would be to, you know, kind of not really address the fact that you had had the same problem. I mean, misery loves company. This is true. And we don't want to really go to that. We want to go to, I know how you feel. I have felt that way myself. This is what worked for me. And this is what I can do for you. Okay? So, This is the way to tell your story in a way that brings people to action. I know how you feel. I've felt that way before. This is what worked for me, and this is what I can do for you. If you can take that thought pattern, that stream of consciousness, and fill in the blanks with your personal story, it will work. If you get bogged down on all kinds of different things that are not relevant to the person in front of you, then you're oversharing if you kind of catch my drift. Now, tying your message to the story, tying your story to the problem, and tying your problem or your solution to your call to action is the recipe for your secret sauce. And I am kind of going out on a limb here when uh, I say that most of my listeners, if they're not already in the self-help and personal development field, they want to be... They're part-time, they're taking a class, they're taking one of my classes. Um, These are people who have had a struggle and a challenge, and they have a solution. They have the secret sauce. What we need to do is bring that out in a creative way of telling your story. Now, there's lots and lots of ways to tell these stories, many, many ways. My favorite is in person. I mean, I love getting the reactions, I love having the feedback, and, you know, it just kind of feels great, and I think that everyone should practice with clients and uh, do some speaking engagements and tell your story to some real people that can give you some real feedback, but ultimately, if you want to be effective, you need to be able to tell your story in various mediums. Now, this could be writing an ebook. This could be creating a podcast. This could be creating a video. But you catch my drift that you need to be able to reach more people than you can reach one-on-one, especially if you're doing smaller events or even clients uh, in a one-on-one situation. You need to create a medium or a means to be able to reach more people, let's say from your website, um, with links, your newsletters, Uh, all of these different ways that are available to us, and you need to know how to make that work. Uh, There's different skill sets on all the different mediums, but knowing that you need to create this message uh, so that it is available to more than just the types of people that you can reach one-on-one is the leap that I want you to make first. Now, tying your message to your story, um, I talked a bit about message clarity. You need to know exactly what it is that you want your message to impart. Now, that's who you are and what you do, what problem that you solve. That is your message, who you are, what problem that you solve. This should be expressed in your title, your tagline, your short descriptions. Uh, it should be Your message should be clearly stated in response to the question, what do you do? Now, that's your message. That's that's specifically that 30 seconds or less if, if it's a spoken word, uh, a couple of paragraphs if it's a written word. And that's the message 
that you want to continually bring up in your story. So if we go back to the storyline, I know how you feel. I've felt that way before. This is what worked for me, and this is what I can do for you. Continually go back to that message and tie that message to your story. Uh, And your story can be told very quickly, or let's just say that you are doing uh, a webinar or a teleseminar or a speaking engagement where it's going to be a half an hour to an hour. You can flesh it out quite a bit more, and I have a lot of techniques for that. You can find some real resources on my website, learnto.us, about how to create this content. But in general, for today's purposes, you want to make sure that that very short answer is woven in and out of the story that you're talking about. Now, tying your story to the problem in the short version here is that you need to have five or six bullet points in your brain at all times that are symptoms of people who have the problem that you solve and benefits of solving that problem. All right, let's just say communication skills in a relationship. Have a feeling that you're on a honeymoon again after a 20-year marriage. I mean, you want to be winding in and out the solutions to the problem and the benefits of solving that problem as you're telling your story. Now, as you do that, creating the recipe for your secret sauce is the benefits and the solutions as is um, described in your call to action. So your call to action for the recipe to the secret sauce is not necessarily how much it costs or how long it's going to take, even though that should be very clear in your mind. What it's going to be is how they're going to feel when this problem is solved. As long as you're focused on the results People are going to be very, very interested in what you have to say. And the details of that can be sent to them later once they already know that they want to do it. That's the way to kind of get yourself away from the problem of closing a sale or feeling like you're in a retail environment or even worse, you know, a a high-pressure sales technique. Just focus on the results. Now, these are just the basic ideas. And um, I do offer a free resource on learn2.us. You can get a free booklet about how to do this in more detail. And I know that you're going to want to do that if you're starting your own self-help and personal development business because that's the number one cause of failure in a new business is not really being very clear on who you are, who your ideal client is, what problem you solve, what the results of that problem being solved are going to be how much it costs and how long it's going to take to solve it. So you need to answer those questions in your own mind. Now this is how you're going to create the message that becomes your brand. And you know it really does make the struggles worthwhile. It brings them full circle. When you can share that with people who are struggling with the same thing it makes you feel empowered and wonderful. And they really do need your expert solutions. Now, I mentioned before there's many ways to share your story, and in person is my favorite. But my special guest today is going to give you a great other option. And since it makes sense to have these choices, uh, let's find out how creating a podcast is a great choice. So let me welcome back my special guest, Martha. How are you? And um, do you have any that you would like to add to what I was talking about with the messaging. Let me tell you, uh, this it, you're right on target, Teresa. Totally on target because it's it's the same thing as creating your business plan. If you don't have a focus, if you don't have clarity in terms of where you're heading to, how are you going to know whether you're getting reaching the outcomes you want for your business? So. You couldn't have said it better. You were speaking my language. (laughs) Well, honey, you know, the thing is, um, do you know how I figured all this out? I bet you do, but (laughs) I know you already know. (laughs) I do, I do. I made all those mistakes myself. I mean, 
that's why I wanted to have you on to talk about five mistakes you do not want to make because I made all of them. You know, I I was so worried that people wouldn't see me as, as the expert that you know, I did the things like um well, I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> I mean, I gave complicated answers in like if someone was unlucky enough to ask me what do you do I tried so hard to be that word professional that people were just like oh my gosh you know I wish I hadn't even asked you know just drive people away and you know I, I I've heard of people I I never really did this but I heard people say well if they're my ideal client they'll just get me and you know that's too much pressure to put on someone when when they're struggling with a the problem, they're not going to get you. They want you to get them. And, you know, I had, um, I went through this whole phase. I don't know if you've ever been through this, but healers in particular go through this, that when people ask you what you do, you try to book them in for a free session so you can show them what you do, thus valuing your time at what? Zero, yes. Oh, my God, at- yes. And how do you recover from zero? You can, I mean, do you, Teresa. You, do you, you can pay them to be there. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm talking about is, is we want to not make these mistakes. And I want to share with our listeners, before we get too far into our content, and I, I do want to tell you all that um, – I'm so grateful and so honored and so appreciative of all of you who week after week turn in or tune in to hear what I have to say. And I want you to know that I take it very, very personally as um, it means so much to me. And that's why I wanted to have Martha on tonight because she is someone that has made a big difference in my business. She's uh, an amazing marketing strategist, and she's actually uh, a partner of mine in one of the pursuits that we're going to talk about a little later in the show, but I wanted to share her with you and some of her uh, background, the way that she came to what she does now, and so Martha, can you tell our listeners just a little bit about uh, how you came to be a marketing strategist? Oh, absolutely. And just just for the record, if anybody thinks that they're out of the norm, I'm out of the norm. I started off my career as a registered nurse with an MBA. So talk about the other extreme. <laughs> but you'd be surprised at how uh, those of us that are in direct services, we learn to market ourselves from the very beginning, especially in healthcare, because we're trying to convince people to do things that we know will get them the results they want. So if you can't market in the healthcare arena, then you're not a good healthcare provider, let me tell you. (laughs) Absolutely. And, you know, you're speaking my my tribe's language because a lot of them are coming from traditional medical fields into the holistic field, or at least they're trying to blend it. So you you have got my jungle drum going. (laughs) There you go. So, as I said, I started off my uh, career as a registered nurse with an MBA, um, and I worked my way up through the ranks uh, to hospital administrator, CFO of a multi-million dollar foundation, and uh, CEO of another uh, nonprofit as well. But I left corporate America to start my own business, which really focuses on taking uh, uh, business leaders and entrepreneurs and taking their businesses to the next level so they can thrive in today's marketplace. And one of the ways I do that is through my marketing strategies. And I've, I've, been, I've had the pleasure of working with you, Teresa, and, you know, you know what I'm capable of. So it's, it's, oh. um, it's really exciting. <laughs> you know, when you know how to work, social media like you do I I mean I'll just share with our listeners I was on Martha's podcast her radio show uh, I think it's been about a month and a half ago and I am still on the first page of Google with that I mean Martha is able to create that type of mojo and like she I mean I think you would agree with me you can't count on it but it happens enough to where um, you know it's it's very very cool 
Yeah, it is. And it may, it gives it gives you that self-confidence that we all need because you were talking about that as well. And it's very it's very important for your your uh listeners and your followers to understand that they have immense value that they are providing and that people need to hear what they're providing. So don't ever downplay the importance of the messages you have to get out. That's very, very important. Passion, having that passion is critical. And you, you know, you, you talked about that. Just hearing you describe how to uh, uh, tell your message appropriately, it all involves passion. It's not about sounding business-like, but it's about demonstrating your your passion for it and that way your knowledge actually comes out, doesn't it, Teresa? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it. it's kind of like a two-edged sword, all right? You are a professional. You do have a business. You want to be um, acknowledged for being organized on time and very professional. But the more that you do that, the kind of less of a connection that you create with someone who's, you know, in in our field, uh, my listeners and myself, when someone calls me, they're having a problem. They, you know, they don't pick up the phone to call me when they're having that great day. Not usually. I mean, sometimes I get one of those calls, but normally something bad has happened, you know, trauma, relationship, physical, something's going on, and you want to come across compassionate. And yet, and yet, we still are doing this to have an exchange of energy, a divine exchange of energy that empowers us as well financially. So that's the fine line to tread, and that's what my expertise and passion is, is helping you do that. And that's why I really, really appreciate what you do, Martha, because I think that that's what you do as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's my goal, to make you know my clients just soar and shine and be successful. Exactly. So, so do you think that you're ready to go into your content portion? Because I'm very excited to hear what these um, five things that you do not want to do is all about. Oh, Absolutely. So let's get going. We, I think we teased them enough, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's do it. All right. Let's start with number one. The first, the most, the first common mistake people make is starting their show without a theme and hoping that it's just going to evolve as you go along. Oh my goodness, I've heard that so many times. In fact, I was told that myself. But me being a type A personality, I couldn't do that, you know, take that leap. I had to have some sort of plan. And so you just, you just need to have, just like everything else you do in business, you have to have a game plan that fits in with your business goals. What are you going to do with that podcast? What's your goal for it? How does it fit in with your business? What are you... How are you going to lead them to things? What are you going to use them uh, in terms of uh, use this this podcast in terms of growing your business? How are you going to integrate that together in terms of your marketing plan? So that's really, really one of the most critical things. If you don't get that right, the rest of what I'm going to say in terms of the big mistakes, it's even if you fix those, you won't make it. You got to fix this one first. So that's so a big. What you're- what you're saying is uh, when you make the mistake of starting your show without a theme and just hope that it will evolve as you go, that's kind of like what I was saying about getting your message straight with your title and your tagline and your short description and being able to state your theme in a very short, less than 30 seconds or a couple of paragraphs, right? That is, isn't that kind of clarity? Is that Absolutely. what you're talking about? Absolutely. You hit the nail right on the head, Teresa. And to the point where, uh, you know, I even start off my show with the same tagline every show. And that's part of my brand because you're branding yourself. That's why I was so excited with your topic of today's show, because it truly speaks to how to even set up an effective podcast from the from the get go. But even more than that, it's how to set up an effective business. Because that clarity helps generally your business plan. 
So So, people may not realize that what you shared with them is more than just marketing. It is really the key and cornerstone of your business. And, you know, I'm all about content creation and, and, you know, the business clarity and message marketing. But what we're talking about here is it doesn't matter what medium you're using. You still go back to the same formula. And podcasting, you know, we're going to talk about this more after you share your content. But podcasting is a great business development exercise, don't you feel? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I, I, I have said before, um, and I was interviewed before, and they asked me about um, what benefit I received from my radio show. And I said the biggest benefit that I got from it was it really helped me gain clarity and laser focus my business even further than I already had. So for me, it had that added value that I never even thought about. Me, I thought about the marketing and all that stuff, but it, it, the laser focus that it helped me with in terms of, uh, you know, creating um, that, that business model was incredible and totally unexpected, quite frankly. I know exactly what you mean. I didn't expect it either. In fact, I started my show, um, and I, I'm just going to share with the listeners that we, Martha and I have a very conversational style. We might sound like we're rambling, but we kind of do have an outline that we're going to follow. But I, I wanted to tell you that when I started my show, it sounded fun. It sounded like a great way to get my message out, but I did the mistake i i i just well let's just start it and let it evolve and you know it was organic it it grew as it did and it wasn't really until about a year ago when i started getting um a better format and i started approaching it with the the laser focus that i bring to other aspects of my life and my business that it really started to show definite results and uh, definite results in how many people were listening and how effective my words, you know, I can see that people actually listen to my podcast, my radio show, and then they take action. And actually, that's more important to my message and to my passion than anything else. You know, that makes me feel appreciated. So the evolve message or the evolve mistake is it just costs you time. Oh, yeah. Time and money, Teresa. Time and money. (laughs) Oh, let's don't talk about that money thing yet. Let's save that as a surprise for later. (laughs) All right. So what's your number two mistake that you do not want to make? Experiment with your equipment on air. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I can't tell oh. you how many times I have heard this happen. And it leaves your your listeners with this lack of confidence in your product. Really, you think they might idea. have a lack of confidence in my product if I'm saying, uh, he- he- hello? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Get familiar with the equipment offline. Record yourself a couple of times. There are different products out there that you can uh, record yourself and play it back. Make sure it – I always – you know what I do, Teresa? And I know you do the same thing. I'm usually (laughs) 10, 15 minutes before my show. I test it. I test all my connections. Make sure everything is going good. And if for some God unknown reason – the internet is not working for me, then I immediately go to my backup plan, right? Go to that backup plan. And listen, your iPhone has a record function. Listen to your beautiful voice. You know, listen to how many times you say, um, um, and, you know, kind of work with yourself a little bit. And if you need someone to help you with that, there are some people who are very good. I know two people that are very good with that. Martha, do you know two people? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, and you know how we learned that once again, how I know about that is I thought I was brilliant, and then I listened to the playback, and I had to take the show down. I hear you. I hear I you. Wasn't th- I wasn't brilliant. I was not brilliant. 
and let me tell you, my first podcast was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and it wasn't, truly, it wasn't horrible, Teresa. But to me, it sounded not the quality I thought my listen and, and I still think my listeners deserve. And it's well, these, all about, you know, delivering yeah. for me, for them. Yes, and it's also about a standard, and, you know, that that's just that's just how we are. So do not experiment with your equipment on the air. Gotcha. All right. So what is the third mistake that you do not want to make? It's inviting guests that don't understand your message. And, oh, my goodness, I made this mistake in the beginning. And what I would have given to have been able to avoid that experience. Oh, my gosh. So Therese, tell me what happened. Was, tell me what happened. I'm I'm curious. Well, let me just... Let me just give you a clue. Give me a clue. I had this, yeah, I had a guest whose message was just not on point with the message of my show. So you can imagine how that derailed the whole energy of the show and everything because it's not what my listeners were expecting or anything. So I had to constantly refocus them back into where they needed to be so that my listeners got what they needed to get from the show. But I thought to myself, oh, my goodness. And I have to tell you, Teresa, this is never, ever going to happen to me again. Because what I did was I made sure that I made my expectations clear to my guests and prepared them from the very beginning. And that was the key, preparation. You know, I can't say that enough. Preparation, preparation, preparation. (laughs) Three P's, the three P's. So um, now you have a business uh, radio show. Correct. You train people on how to be an entrepreneur, a successful small business person, your strong background is marketing, social media, all those types of things, whereas mine is more self-help and personal development. So having a guest on your show whose message is not on point with you kind of leaves you contentless, right? Oh, my God. And those silence moments, you know, those long silences that you you go, oh, my God, what am I going to do? You know? Exactly. And, you know, for me, a, a guest whose message was not on point with my message might actually, I mean, I have to say this, if if I had a guest whose message was not on point with mine, I might actually be able to do a devil's advocate type of thing and turn it into, uh, you know, like a debate or two sides of the same question type of thing, and it might be easy to save. But if I had a show like yours and they just weren't giving me any content or nothing I could use, that would be a nightmare. You know, I had to give the content, Teresa. Thank God. That's the other, remember I said three prepares, right? I prepare ahead of time so I become knowledgeable with the content that they're going to deliver. So if they get stuck, if they, you know, freeze up, because that happens to people, let's be honest, you know, you're being put on the spot. Um, I've, I have 14,000 listeners, so it can be a little intimidating, <laughs> So, uh, wow, you know, I, I didn't know she had 14,000 listeners or I would have been scared. See, I don't I don't broadcast until the end because that way people don't get nervous. <laughs> I, I would have been panicked, but of course I prepared on my iPhone. <laughs> anyway, I, I think I think I understand what you're saying. It's just like a good lawyer. Don't ask a question unless you know the answer, right? That's right. Or, or and unless you know what answer they're going to give you, because God okay. forbid they give you the wrong the answer opposite of what really you thought is. they were going to say. Exactly. Oh my goodness. So what's the fourth thing that is a mistake you don't want to make. Ah, this one is the expecting that you you know you're going to put something up on a platform and it will just get heard. It's it, it's just, you know just people are, it's already up there people are going to hear it. Also known as the build it and they will come syndrome. That's a bad sure. build syndrome. Oh my goodness, yes. Because you you have to get the word uh, the you know you, I have to just say one word about this, and you're gonna and, and this is my word, but 
It's one word, marketing, marketing, marketing. You don't have to break the bank to get this done, but you've got to market your program. How in heaven's name are they going to know to listen to your valuable content if they don't know you exist for Pete's sake, right? Right. And you know what? I I have to admit that now we've gone through four of the points. Three of them I was guilty of, and I was guilty of this one. I thought, because I was such a novice at online marketing when I started my show, that all I had to do was put it up on blog talk radio, and right away I would be getting you know phone calls from George Clooney and Amal Alamudin wanting me to, you know, have them on my show and stuff. And, you know, four years ago, podcasting hadn't grown to the point that it has now. But even four years ago, putting something up on a platform and not marketing it is just the same as being in your kitchen and talking to your dog. It's just the same thing. So, I mean, and and I do want to make the correlation that a podcast is one of the very best ways to market your business, but I'm talking about what we're talking about is the same thing for anything on your website, whether it be your products, your e-books, your private programs, whatever you are doing that you're trying to get out into the collective consciousness, the World Wide Web there, if you don't market it, And if you don't know what you're doing with current state-of-the-art marketing, it's like being in your kitchen talking to your dog. Am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. And I have to, like I said before, you don't have to break the bank to get this done. And one of the things that I actually go through um, uh, is how you can do this step-by-step in my segment, Find and Grow Your Audience in the Podcasting for Beginners program that we are both, uh, Teresa and I are wor- both working on. But this particular module... Um, Wait a minute, module... isn't, that a sec- isn't that a secret? Are we talking about oh. that already? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I mess it up? <laughs> oh, my goodness. We'll talk are we a little talk- bit more. Oh, my goodness. Okay, all right. So you're teaching Find and Grow Your Audience in a podcaster podcasting for beginner program that we're working on that's not going to be available till the end of the year. But Martha... We're on point four, and we are going to get to point five. But please let our listeners know where they can go to your website and get your free gift. Ah, yes. It's the seven secrets for entrepreneurs. And if you go to MarthaASanchez.com, right there on the first page, you'll see the opt-in, and you can put in your name and your email and get your seven secrets for entrepreneurs, and it'll take you step-by-step step through the process of actually, um, you know, making sure that your game plan is on point for uh, being an entrepreneur and being effective. Because uh, one of the things that I look at, Teresa, as you well know, and you know me well enough to know this, is I I, what I apply, I apply maybe in to the certain circumstances and the examples that I'll give you will be specific to what we're talking about. But what I actually tell you can be applied across the board to any aspect of your business. All of the marketing techniques work for all of the marketing techniques, and they work better if you are consistent on all of the marketing techniques. But let me just share with the listeners one thing. I've been using Martha's techniques, okay? I got her seven secrets. I downloaded her free gift. And Martha and I have a relationship. We are working on a product together. But I have gone from, well, I won't say zero engagement, but let's just say, you know, a little bit better than talking to my dog, but not not a lot better in my Twitter engagement. I had 7,200 impressions on my Twitter account in two days last week. Now, this is Monday, so last week was like Friday and Saturday, 7,200 impressions on my Twitter account in two days after going for a couple of years with very, very little engagement. Now, I know that there's people out there that have hundreds and thousands of followers. I get it. You know, I'm not setting any records. However, 
going from zero to 7,200 is a big deal for me. And I popped a, a glass of champagne, I have to tell you about that. And I count Martha's techniques for that. You know, I have to, I have to give credit where credit is due. And that's why I really am excited about Find and Grow Your Audience in the Podcasting for Beginner program because you're going to share some of your secrets to do just exactly that in this very affordable program. Right, Martha? Oh, absolutely. And it's a comprehensive plan because I don't believe in putting all your eggs in one basket. And oh, it's something yeah, yeah, yeah. that you and you can customize to your own needs always. But you've got to, you know, I, I, I help you with the clarity. And that's why I absolutely love Teresa's, um, you know, Teresa's models and her content management. And she just drills it down for you. So you're getting it. You're, you're getting the information to the, the core that you need to begin. I pick it up, I, you know, I pick up the ball and take it to the next area and so on and so forth. And I think that's what's so exciting for me because I know that people who participate in this program, by the time they come out, they will have so many of the tools they already need, not just for the podcast, but really for their business. Exactly, because I, I'm the girl that can get your message really, really clear, get your content started and create it, and then you get, are the girl that gets everything out. And we have some more team members. It's not like it's just you and me. So let's go ahead and get to the five, the number five thing that you do not want to do, and then I think we should probably talk about our secret a little bit more. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, number five is... Think about this, the, thinking about distribution and getting an audience and thinking that it's organic and that, you know, it just takes time, right? It L- just listen, takes time. My, my dog is working on his Twitter account, so just uh, my listeners are used to my dogs, and my dog is working on his Twitter engagement right now. So just can you repeat that, please? Oh, certainly. People thinking that the distribution and getting – an audience with their podcast is organic in you know quotation marks or that it just takes time although yes it does take a little bit of time everybody thinks that it takes longer than it does it doesn't everybody thinks that creating a marketing strategy is all they need and they never need to change it this is not true what you need to do is just like a business plan there is all the, your your marketing plan and your business plan are always evolving. It is about planning for the future and the growth of your show and how to integrate it with the growth of your business. So you got to see the big picture. I, I go back to saying what I said in an earlier portion of the show. If you don't know where you're going, how in heaven's name are you going to get there? How are That's you going to get there, Teresa? Well, I mean, if I walk out of my front door and turn right, I might eventually get to California. But if I plan on going to California and I have a game plan, I probably would get on a plane. There you go. And okay, you'd be there in a couple of hours versus how many days maybe, you know? And I might have to spend money on a plane ticket, but how much is it going to cost me to walk across Texas? and Arizona and Nevada. and Do you see what I'm saying? It might seem like it's cheaper at the beginning, but by the time you actually get there, then you're exhausted and you don't have any place to stay. And I mean, it's always better to just go ahead and set a budget, set a game plan, get it done. Yeah, and, and I have to say, I have to add to that. It's It's about being realistic because, even if cheaper, what it gets you sometimes, Teresa, and I don't know about you, is sometimes people that are so frugal, they think they're, they're saving all this money, but the lost opportunity, the opportunity costs of what the business they have lost is so much more than what they would have spent on that, uh, on, on just cutting to the chase and, you know, shortening their learning curve by getting the information and being trained up front. That's what I said. If I would have known or had the had resources that I have now and the knowledge that I have now, if I could have learned it from somebody, I would have paid money for it 
and I could have been where I am a lot sooner. But then again, people wouldn't have the benefit of my knowledge. So I guess it's okay the for me. Struggle. Right <laughs> and that kind of goes back full circle because the self-help and personal development business is based on finding people who have had the problem that you have and have learned how to solve that problem and now are able to share the results of that or the the um, the solutions that they've come up with. And you and I both, I mean, I, I actually think that um, your corporate background and the way that, you know, you've got an MBA and the way that you problem solve is a little bit different than mine. My background is more uh, an artistic, not that you're not artistic, but artistic in the sense that, you know, I kind of expect to create the wheel myself. And um, the, the, the benefit of that is that a lot of times stuff comes out unique. But the downfall of that is many, many times I have taken so much longer to create the success that I wanted. And I think that, you know, I'm doing a shout out right now to all the teachers and coaches and healers that follow me that you can resonate with that, that you've kind of tried to create the wheel yourself. And the the downfall to that is if you get discouraged. Now, I was speaking earlier today to one of my best friends who is an amazing healer. One-on-one, -on -one, she is one of the most compassionate, empathetic, and she's quick. I mean, I go to her. She's a wizard. She can she can change me physically and emotionally so quickly. But the marketing aspect of it, even though she gets the gist of it, the actual implementation of doing the marketing has frustrated, and um, she was actually quite depressed today. And a lot of the people that... Um, I mean, I'm just going to go here for a minute because I, I, the whole month of October, I opened up for free 15-minute gym prescription sessions, and uh, I always have free 15-minute consultations, but a lot of people contacted me, and they were in this exact same place. Their business was stuck. They wanted to either quit a job or they had started a business and they were making no money, and they were so discouraged and I, I mean, I can count on more than two hands people that were telling me that they were just ready to just give it up. And these are all people with amazing gifts, gifts that the world needs. And what what struck me so hard, Martha, and, and everybody who's listening tonight, is that when you get to that point, sometimes you go to the wrong place to get help. And it yep. doesn't help. And that's happened to me. I, I've spent lots of money with people who did not get my problem. They they didn't understand my problem, but I was so desperate that I just hoped that they could. And what I'm telling you right now is if you don't hear the resonance in the message and the story and the solution to the problem that you really feel you have, you have not found the right person. And we're talking about podcasting right now as a business development tool, and it's a very good one. And it's helped my business, and it's helped Martha's. But what is beneath that, it's not really about podcasting at all. It's about sharing your message in a way that's effective and empowers mm -hmm. you. It empowers you as a professional, and it empowers your financial and your money story. And if that's not happening for you, then please uh, start to think in a new and different business paradigm because what we want to do for you and what my business wants to do for you and Martha's business wants to do for you is give you the tools to succeed on your own. Now, Martha, I want to ask you one key question here. What is the key element that you see for success and I want you to steer it to my crowd tonight because we're talking to my my self helpers, my problem solvers, you know, my my personal development people. What is their key element for success? The key element to me is and, and you're not gonna be surprised that I that I picked this one, is marketing. Truly. I think they have and part of the marketing and believe it or not, Teresa, your 
your branding is part of the marketing. It is such a critical piece of it. So getting their message out the way that you spoke about with the talents that you have to help people develop their message, that is critical. But once you have created your brand and you know the tools that you need to you know, broadcast your brilliance, whether it be in a podcast or whether it be in, you know, uh, in, uh, in in networking event or however that is. And how you interact with people, whether it's in an interview or within an networking, you want to do it like a professional. And then after you have all that in place, all those little elements, then it's time to identify what you need to create an effective marketing campaign. And here is the key. This campaign must focus on getting and growing your, you know, your tribe, your listeners, your followers, whatever, your clients, your customers, whatever your format is. For, for our purposes, because we were talking about podcasting, of course, it's listeners, but it doesn't matter. It works across the board for whatever your person or your individual um, is. And this strategy is going to lead you to identifying where to reach your target audience as well as creating a loyal following. Listen to what I'm saying to you, loyal following. And that's the key. A lot of people get hung up on the numbers. Do not get hung up on the numbers. It's not about getting 30,000 followers on Twitter. I know people who have 30,000 followers on Twitter, and guess what? They bought those followers. They don't do anything. They don't have engagement. They don't buy your products. They don't interact with you. That is worthless to you. I would much rather have 5,000 followers that interact with me than 30,000 that do nothing. Or even 100. I mean, or even 100. I'm sorry. Yeah, even 100. I would even 100. I'd rather even have 100 people that get me and that I get them. I'd like to know. When I look at my newsletter list and see who's opening it, I I have an actual face to the name. And I like that. Now, Martha, I have to do something right now because I'm so excited. Um this the call tonight is really supposed to be about marketing tips for people who are on my list, and I know that we're going to put this out to other people as well. But Martha and I are involved in um, a group of people, podcastingbyprofessionals.com. There's five of us. Um, The other team players are Russ Johns, Suzanne Streisauer, and Keith Rupnick, and they are amazing people, and I will be hosting them on some uh, content creation shows as well. But we had something happen for our um, our business today, and uh, it's it's somebody that Martha brought in. Martha is an extremely well connected person, and she got a sponsor for our group. And I wanted to play the sponsor commercial. Is that okay? Would that be all right with you, Martha? Oh gosh, yes. I because I, I'm really stoked about this, and this just goes to show what people are looking for and what you can accomplish with the right tools. Exactly. And and when we finish playing the commercial, we're going to come back and talk about the product that we're creating just a little bit, okay? Just for about five minutes. Great. All right, here it goes. Global Broadcasting Networks is a proud sponsor of this show, brought to you by Podcasting by Professionals. At GBN, we provide the ultimate experience in professionally produced podcasting and live aired radio shows through our network stations, including toginet.com, allbusinessradionetwork.com, and lessonsinjoyfullivingradionetwork.com. We are currently listened to in over 200 countries around the globe and plan to double our listening audience in 2015. We are currently looking for great content providers just like you to start your own show to reach your target niche market. We have listeners from all areas of the cultural, spiritual, and business communities looking for the convenience of connecting with you through your podcasts. What we look for in our radio show host is the commitment to professional training and show development so that you will be set up as the expert in your niche right away. We know that this is essential for your success, and that's why we are proud to sponsor Podcasting by Professionals. Ask your trainer at Podcasting by Professionals how you can get started with your very own radio show today. 
Well, you know, the the thing that stood out for me in that is that they're looking for people in the cultural community, in business, spiritual, and personal niches. And that is a full circle. And um, I, I have to tell you, because a lot of the people that are listening know me personally, that almost brings me to tears just to hear that type of endorsement for the kind of work that I want to do. What about you, Martha? I, it gave me goose pimples. It really, I got goosebumps, and it just, it was so exciting because what the message to me is that there is a platform for everybody out there to get their message across. It doesn't matter what area you're focusing on. There is a way for your voice to get heard. Absolutely. And, you know, the team that we've put together, uh, the team that has come together, to do this starts with the content creation with me and then goes into the technical aspects. Um, actually, what equipment is bare minimum, how to get started with it, how to use it, and then what pieces to add to your equipment one at a time as you grow your reach and then your dream machine, you know, if you're ready to just jump right in. Then it goes into uh, Suzanne. Suzanne Streisauer is, uh, she's a master collaborator but she's going to show you how to use guest in order to uh, strategize and monetize your show uh, by getting other people to promote your show for you. Then we get to Martha's piece, which is all about getting your brand blasted out on social media and other marketing techniques. And we finish up with Keith Rupnick, who represents Radio Link's and Igloo Radio, and he's the one that shows you how to get your show distributed on various platforms. And when you put it all together like that, it's kind of like a one, two, three, four, five. And at the same time, because I want to come back to what I'm all about, these podcasts then can then be transcribed into ebooks. They can be put up on YouTube as a PowerPoint or a video. It's a complete content creation machine. And it's going to be uh, for sale at an earlier price very soon. And all you have to do is continue to follow myself and Martha, and you'll hear all about it. What would you like to say about that, Martha? In the next, We have about two minutes left. Well, I have to say that one of the biggest elements for me that I know turns off a lot of people is the technical aspect. And with Russ Johns, he makes it really easy to understand. He That's really right. does. He really did. And he, and some of the things that he shows show you how to monetize that podcast on different platforms, not just on the audio alone, which I find fascinating. Yeah, because, you know, the podcasting is the beginning, or it can be one of the beginnings, but it's certainly not the end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because like I said before, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. Well, Martha, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show, and I think we've got so many great things going on. Oh, absolutely, and it's such a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Teresa. I had a blast. I don't know about you, but I had a blast. (laughs) I think we did a pretty good job. And I wanted to remind uh, my listeners that um, go ahead and go to learn2.us. I have a couple of things going on. This this podcast is going to be put up on the, um, the member site in the free area so you can access it again. And we're going to be sending out a lot of information in the next couple of weeks about getting a early bird price on Podcasting for Beginners, and all of our member-level uh, content at Learn2.us. Martha, where can they get your free gift one more time? At Martha, that's Martha with a T-H, A Sanchez.com. Wonderful. And it's been my pleasure to host you today. And if you have any parting words for our listeners, I would love to hear them. Get your message out 
and market, market, market. You can do it. You make differences in people's lives. Don't let your message be unheard. Wonderful. Thank you, Martha, and I'll be talking to you again real soon. Thanks so much for being on Learn 2 today. And this is Teresa Marone signing off, and I just want to remind you that Learn 2 is all about helping you so that you can help others. Have a great week. Talk to you all very soon.